Hi everyone. So today we're going to be creating a bumblebee out of watercolor. It's lots of fun and watercolor and marker. If you've noticed, I kind of outlined it with marker and then I, I'm going to show you how you can add some water to create some color on your paper. So just a second here. First, we're going to draw our bee. Okay, so I've got my pencil here and I have my watercolor paper taped onto my board and let's take a look. So what we're going to do is we're first going to break everything down in shapes like we usually do. So we're going to do kind of like half a circle for the bumblebee's head. This might be a little bit bigger than my example but that's okay. Nothing ever looks the same even from the same artist. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do an oval that is like sideways. Because we're just breaking it all down into shapes. So first it was half, half a circle, then an oval. What a perfect thing to be painting. We're going to be seeing some of these soon because it's getting nicer outside. I'm so excited. The snow is almost gone from the last blizzard we had and I am very happy about that. There we go. So we've got our little oval. So then what we're going to do is it's kind of like a shape of an egg. Remember, I do sometimes do my shapes, but I do them quite uh, lightly so I can erase some of my lines, but it helps me to kind of see. This has to go down like this. See how the shapes fit. So I do lots of shapes of like a circle or an egg or an oval or a square or a rectangle or even a teardrop, things like that. And then I just work my, keep working my way through. Okay. Remember, not everything always looks like the example exactly. I try to get quite close. Here, I've got my trusty eraser. Okay, and I'm gonna go through just like this. Get rid of some of the shapes I don't need. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is create some wings. So these are a little bit different. I'm actually going to do the shape I think works. So I'm going to do, it's kind of like a curved triangle. So we can actually even put the triangle in here, right? And I'm going to end up erasing these, but I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to kind of curve the edges. Oh, that one's pretty close to the edge. Just like that. So it's kind of like a curved triangle. Not that there's really probably such a thing, but to me, I guess there is. So I'm gonna get rid of those little lines I don't need, but it helps me to see the shapes in my drawing. And it helps me to learn how to draw better because I'm not worried about the detail so much, but creating the right shapes and then going in for the detail. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little bottom wing here. And however you want. If you just want to do one big wing each, we can do that as well. And then I'm going to do the bumblebee's legs. So I'm going to create them like this is the upper leg, the lower leg. I'm not really sure how it works, but for me, this is how I draw them. But you could just draw, draw one leg and the feet right attached if you like to. Remember, it's your artwork, right? I always tell you guys that. It's so important. Okay, see that one's a little off, but that's okay. I like things that are not perfect. And I know you guys probably know that about me. I like things when they're kind of like a little bit, like one side might be different than the other. I'm gonna go and do, draw the antennas. And remember, this is just a map. This doesn't mean we're stuck creating something that looks just like this, so that we can change it up. And you might hear my puppy's footsteps around me right now because I didn't put them away today. I'm going to see how good they are. I'm doing more and more videos, so I'm trying really hard for them to like learn that not to bark, but I 
don't know if that's going to totally happen today, but I hope so. Okay, so let's go in with the other leg. And remember, it doesn't not have to be perfect. This is the problem with art, is sometimes we're so hard on ourselves that we end up stopping because we don't think it's perfect and we don't want it to be perfect. Okay, and you'll see that how I'm going to teach you kind of that with markers and stuff, how I like when I even place my paint that it's very like, I guess organic is the way to say, like I want it to kind of move into different shapes that the paint decides to go into. And I think sometimes it adds a little bit more character. So I'm going to put the honey bee, or I guess it's not a honey bee. I made the mistake of taking some pictures of some bees last year and I put them up and everyone's like, that is not a honey bee, that is a bumblebee. So for all my people that know the difference, that's awesome. I just am probably not one of them. Okay, so we got, and we're gonna do one more stripe. And if you decide to do less stripes or more stripes, like we always say, you just go for it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my paints out. So let's start painting. So we need our watercolors today and um, some markers. And I like water soluble markers. It doesn't mean it has to be, but I like it because I, then I can mess them up with water because this is definitely not perfect, perfect. I'm kind of like letting my paint go the directions I want. It wants, I should say. So it's kind of more fun that way, I find. So I'm gonna take, what I did was I took my brush and I created a puddle. And you're like, why did you do that? Well, if you saw last week's, you might know why, but that is okay. We're gonna keep going through. I add my paint to the puddle. So it shouldn't be dripping over the sides. It should be nice and kind of contained. And let's just place our paint in the puddle and see what happens. See how I'm not, I'm kind of willy nilly. Oh, and I kind of made a bit of a mess, but that's okay. That's what our paper towel is for or our dry paint brushes to clean up the mess. So this is what it looks like when we create puddles and we just add the paint and see how it kind of makes the decisions on what it would like to do. And you can also like add saran wrap and let it dry like that or aluminum foil like my first video showed you or salt and see what happens when it dries with those things on it. Make some really cool texture. When I use watercolor, I don't really like, I, I don't like it so soft and detailed that I can kind of get a little too picky on picky about my painting. Um, I try to force myself out of my comfort zones by like creating puddles and different textures. So really I'm not even, I'm like experimenting with art supplies, but I'm not necessarily creating something that's going to look the same every time I do it. And it helps me to kind of come out of that perfection bubble that I sometimes do to myself and I know we all do. So we're just gonna go in and see these are puddles so I'm just gonna add some paint willy-nilly. I don't know how it's gonna dry but we can go back and work on it after. So I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna keep working on the black because we don't wanna put a puddle in a puddle because what's gonna happen is you're gonna find your colors are gonna start running. And sometimes that's an okay thing if you want that but with this one, I just wanna kinda of show you how we can work our way through, and create these organic shapes with our paint. Like it's nothing that we're creating that's gotta be perfect. See how I'm just kinda of like going into the puddle with, with my paint. But I'm gonna show you something a little bit different because I just want you guys to always have options and remember everything you do is like I'm guiding and just showing you things that you can do, but I never want your painting to look the same as mine because it means then you're not experimenting. So I've always said, so this is wet on wet technique, and now I'm gonna do wet on dry. And what that means is I'm taking my wet paint and I'm putting it on dry paper. And do you see the difference? This is very like organic shapes where this one, it's exactly where I'm placing my paint. So. We can let this stuff dry and if I don't like it and I'd like some more control, I just go on when it's dry with some more black paint. And sometimes I work through my paintings like that where I'll do some organic shapes and then I'll clean them up a little bit with paint on dry. 
But then I'll go on and put random shapes on again with maybe like a purple or something. And the thing that you want to always kind of remember with paint is watercolor, it's important to try to work, and I guess I'm not doing this, I'm not following the rules, is the darks, if you had a dark black and then you put a yellow on it, you wouldn't see the yellow. So always start with your light colors of that area and work your way up because really watercolors is all about layering, right? Like, see, I just kind of like go in and just gonna add some colors there. Okay, so I don't wanna work on my yellow just yet because my puddles are still wet. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do the black parts of the legs. And these ones I'm going to kind of do puddles. And the more water there is, the more your paint can flow. But if you just put a little bit, you'll find it flows a little bit. But I want you to try that out. I want you to kind of work your way through and see how that goes. So I'm just going in like just lightly and it's not perfect. See, I'm just kind of like, oh, I don't have any water on that. I'm just going to go in because I'd like the legs to kind of look like I did them the same, but they don't have to look perfect. I want you to look, I did this on purpose. I added some water around because I want to show you that sometimes you might have your colors get a little bit kind of off the edges and that's an okay thing. Like this is the one I have here is kind of a mess. It looks a mess, but I sometimes think that there's beauty in those messes. Okay, so there we go. Then what I'm going to do is we're going to see, uh, it's still quite wet. So I'm going to be back in just a moment. I'm going to let this dry because I'm going to want to go in with my yellow and I don't want my yellow and black to kind of combine. So I'm going to put my paint here and I'm going to turn my camera off and I will be back in just a moment. Hi everyone. So we're, I'm back and this is, it's still a little bit damp, but it's dry enough. So I'm going to go in now. And I'm gonna do the yellow part. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. Just kind of create these puddles of water. And I've got my yellow paint here. So I'm gonna go in with lots of yellows and some oranges, I think. There we go. I'm going to go through all the spots that I'm going to do yellow. And you see there's a little bit of yellow still on my paintbrush, but that's okay. I'm going to go in and just like organically kind of place the paint. There. So no worries about... See, what would happen is if we were doing this and the black was still wet, you'll find the black starts running into the yellow. So, and that happened to a few spots on my painting, but that was okay. I just didn't want to do that for the actual class one. But if it does run in a little bit, I just take a paper towel and then wipe it off. Like just put it on and let it kind of soak up the paint and then just wait for it to dry. So you can pause the, pause the class. And I'm going to show you too. Remember how I said you can go in with paint on dry paper and see how it changes that a little bit? Sometimes I'll do that and then I'll put some, I'll wait for that to dry, add some water and then start adding a little bit of different color. But I'm going to go in like this. So I did my puddle, I've got my paint, just work my way through. Oh, I really like how bright that yellow is. I'm going to add maybe a little bit of orange, but not a lot. So I've got my red and I'm going to add some yellow because remember our color wheel. Red and yellow make orange. Whoa, <laughs> what was that? Okay, so I'm gonna go in and just kind of add a little bit. Like it doesn't need to be lots or perfect, but I just kind of like a little bit of the yellow just, just to change it up a bit. And if it's not perfect, if you feel like you need to kind of add a little bit more water, you can do that too. And then they'll run a little bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and see how this was, this isn't a lot of water on here because I had used it on dry paper. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water. And that's the thing with watercolors, just lots of ways to use them. And you just need to like, 
try everything and see what it does. And sometimes it's going to end up and you're like, why did I do that? But sometimes you're going to find some really cool ways to use your, your paints. So not every painting is going to turn out exactly probably the way you want. Okay. So these wings, I'm going to go in and just create some petals. I'm not going to go into the yellow or it's going to start pulling it into the wings. I'm just going to randomly kind of go in there and then I'm going to add a lot of white and then I'm going to use purple like this one because I like how the purple marker worked out. So I'm going to add some red and some blue because that creates purple, right? Ooh, that's pretty messy purple. Okay, I want it more deep. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure I get lots of the water off my brush to make sure we've got that. And I'm just gonna add little bits. So I'm just gonna kinda go in randomly and fill in the wings. And see how I'm not being perfect? I'm kinda like off the, I kind of go out of the lines a little bit and that's okay because that's what this one's kinda looking like and that's what I kinda am going for. So sometimes my stuff is all neat and tidy and sometimes I just have fun, just like this one. It's a bit of a mess, but sometimes I think the mess is just beautiful. So I've got a little bit and got a little bit of the purple. I'm gonna just add it. I'm gonna mix it into the water. Just kind of makes those shapes that it's going to. I add a little bit more just because it's darker over here. And just random places. Don't overthink it. Okay. I'm also gonna go in. And I'm going to darken up the legs a little bit. So, and I'm going to go in because this stuff is all dry. So remember when we put on our paint, it's going to be different than if we had added it to a puddle, right? So I'm just going to go in and kind of clean that up, make it a little darker. I might, you know what? I might add a little bit of dark to here too, but I'm not getting it to touch my yellow puddle because then it will make a mess. But I'm just gonna go in like this. See, I touched the puddle and it came in, but that's okay. I'll just add a little bit more black. Okay, so now we are gonna let this sit again and dry. And then we're gonna go in and do the background and the outline, which is so much fun. So I will be back in just a minute. So I'm back and it's all damp, not totally dry, but that's okay. So the colors aren't going to make too much of a mess. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and do the background. And I'm going to do some pink, some purples, some oranges, and I'm just going to kind of like layer my paint up. So I'm going to start with orange. And like I have always said that with watercolor, it's going to dry lighter. But I really like the fact and the effect that you can kind of go in and add layers. There we go. So let's just add the orange first. Okay. Perfect. Make another puddle. It's not so much of a runny one, but it allows my paint to kind of move a little bit. Oh, and I think I'm almost out of orange. I can't believe I literally used it all up. Okay. So the next I'm going to go in is I'm just going to add a little bit more water just to different areas. And I'm going to go in with, I'm going to create Actually, I kind of like that pink. It's a little bit of pink and purple. It was from the wings. <clears throat> I always like to use sometimes colors that I use in one spot, part of the painting and somewhere else, and I find it kind of helps your eye. It balances it a little bit. Okay. So let's just kind of work our way through. And then you can use your paper towel and sop up some of the paint if you want it lighter in certain areas. Okay. 
Oh, I love that. That looks so good. So you could just keep working the layers, but I really kind of like what I have here, to be honest. Go in and just kind of clean up the lines. But I want to show you next is what I meant by the markers. So I'm going to take purple. And yes, you probably shouldn't use markers at this point. You should wait for everything to dry, but I'm going to show you. I'm just going to kind of go in with the dry areas and kind of like just do an outline. And you're going to see why. I'm going to take my brush, add some water to it. And remember, they're water soluble markers. So if they didn't run, that's okay too. But do you see how I can kind of go around the outline and it kind of like takes the purple and layers it in there. And I really kind of like that effect. I use it on quite a bit of my paintings, to be honest, when they're a little bit more of, I have like paintings that are super detailed and like clean looking. I don't do this on those, but I do them on the ones I like to be a little bit more like, I don't know, um, messy. Messy's good. So I'm gonna take the purple and I'm just gonna work my way through, right? my way through that outline kind of kind of blends it all in I'm going to add the outline in a couple more spots I do use Crayola markers quite a bit and the reason I do is because my son loves markers so I have other ones I use too I just make sure if I do this it's kind of water they're not permanent they're water soluble so then you can Work them through with some water. Okay. And if you see, I'm not being like so super perfect. Sometimes my pencil lines show. And because of the type of painting I'm doing, that is just fine with me. So I'm gonna go in and mess, mess the purple up. Sorry, I hiccuped. I don't know if anyone heard that. I don't know what the heck. Okay, so I'm gonna go in. And I'm going to clean this up. See? Now I'm just adding lines and they don't have to be perfect. And I'm just going in with my brush. We're just about done our project. So you can add more layers if you want it to be dark. But I kind of like this. But this one I added a lot more oranges. I added some orange marker and kind of like work that through too. There we go. Here's some more purple purple in but I definitely like I love it it's messy but it's absolutely perfect okay and so here is my B and if you want to keep going with your layers there's probably about three layers of watercolor paint on here and I just kept adding some more oranges and pinks but I really really like how this worked out and I kind of like it this way so I show you that there's two different versions you can do. It's the same thing. It's just keep adding your layers. So please put it up on your parents' Facebook and tag Create, Dream, and Paint so I can see what you guys did. I'm super excited. Okay, I'll talk to you next week.